Hello and welcome to another lecture on safety while working on heights. This is part of a three series lecture. We had covered a few of the topics in the previous lectures. In today's lecture, we will be covering the uh, remaining portions of what we uh, of safety in works at height. This is unit three of the course MIS 023, which is part of the postgraduate certificate in industrial safety. Before we start with the unit, we'll just look at the uh, outline of the unit. The unit is safety in works at height. There are, um, we discussed scaffolding in the previous uh, lectures. Then we also discussed ladders. The next part in this unit is working on roofs. And the last part in this unit is use of related machinery and equipment. So in today's lecture, we'll be talking about working on roofs and use of related machinery and equipments. So when you all know that working on roof is an integral part of any, any maintenance or construction activities related to a building. Now it is a specialist activity. It cannot be taken in isolation or done by people who are not trained to do it because there are a lot of risk involved in it. So we look at certain factors that are to be kept in mind or certain things that have to be kept in mind while working on roofs. Now let's look at what are the different types of accidents that occur while working on roof. Now one of them is fall from the roof edges, which means that when somebody is walking on the surface of a terrace or a roof, there, there is a risk that they could fall off from the edge. The second would be that there, there are openings in the roof and this could be in the form of ducts or in form of some uh, unfinished work. So we know that bathroom ducts which are opening, which open into the roof or even the kitchen shafts which open into the roof, these, if they are not covered in a proper manner, there is a risk that people who work on the terrace, on the rooftop, might slip and fall into it. So the second type of accident that can happen while, work, while working on roof is the fall that happens through openings in roof. Now there is another third aspect of type of accident that happens when there is uh, when working on roof and this is through fragile roof. We know that there are certain kinds of roof which are which could be made of glass, which could be made of polycarbonate, which could be even made of plastic sheets. And if when one treads on it, there is a risk that the fragile roofs could break and then that can cause casualties and accidents. Now we look at the different types of roofs that we have in order to understand what are the mechanisms or the safety precautions that we need to take while working on it. So the first one is flat roof, which is by the name itself, you know that a flat roof is one which is flat, which is there where there is no slope or anything of that sort. And there is a certain precautionary mechanism that we need to take on flat roofs. The next is sloping roof. Any roof that has got uh, an angle, an inclination of more than 10 degrees is called a sloping roof. And we need to take precautions while working on sloping roofs also. The third kind of roof, which we discussed just now, is the fragile roof. Fragile roofs, again, we said it could be a skylight or some sort of mechanism which is uh, used to let in sunlight and daylight into an area and these are not usually made of the structural it's not part of the structural uh, component of the building it could be an additional glass kind of roof a transparent roof in order to allow daylight and so these may not be structurally as stable as a proper as a normal roof so now let's look at how to address these issues so flat roofs are roofs which are um, de they're defined to be flat roofs which uh, have a slope which is less than 10 degrees the main mechanism that we use in flat roofs is to have guardrails and tow boats and uh, wherever there is a risk of falls of greater than 2 meters, we need to provide uh, tow boards and uh, guardrails. Now usually these uh, flat roofs have a parapet around it and if the parapets are strong enough, what we can do is we can attach these uh, mechanisms like guardrails and tow boards to these parapets. Now, there, is, there are instances where um, the parapets are not there or there are instances where the workers have to hinge themselves onto the parapet and then hang down in order to attain, access some other level below the roof. And for this, what we use, is we can use counter blocks which are made of precast concrete or me where any strong counterweights can be used in order to help balance the weight of the person hanging from the rooftop. And so this is an edge protection that we use. 
So now that we've got an idea of the protection mechanism in flat roofs, now we look at what happens, what are the mechanisms that we use for slope roofs. Now slope roofs, as we discussed earlier, it, any rooftop which has a slope of more than 10 degrees should have compulsory edge protection and this is mandated by law. We know we are very familiar with sloping roofs. Uh, we have tile roofs or any any roof which is common in our vernacular architecture. And uh, one of the problems that these roofs, the, the, one of the reasons why we have these roofs is in order to allow the water to drain away, the rainwater to drain off. And also in countries where or in regions where there are um, snowfall, then this is used to allow these. Um, rainwater or snow to run away. Now one of the risks that happens is that because of the weathering these roofs may give the impression of being very strong and sturdy but that may not be the case. Also when there are repairs or some other works especially using tars etc the tar liquid tar and it gives an impression of being completely safe and sturdy but when there is a point weight or point load ap applied to it there is a chance of the roof giving away. So one of the things that we have to keep in mind while working on sloping roofs is that there has to be a proper mechanism in the first place to ensure that the roof is sturdy and stable. Let's now look at some of the mechanisms that we have, safety mechanisms that we have to protect these sloping roofs. In the figure given on the screen, you can see the edge protection for sloping roofs. In the first one, you can see um, a scaffolding like structure set a, a little away from the wall of the structure. So what happens is in case while working a person or material rolls down the sloping roof it can be stopped by the scaffolding that has been provided. The second figure on the right shows the a clamping system where the scaffold, scaffold is clamped to the wall and again it is close to the roof edge and this also prevents the falling of uh, people or equipment from the surface. Now one of the risks of sloping roof is that there could be moss which has accumulated over time making the roof very slippery. So mechanisms like this while working on roofs help the, pe help the people, the workers working on the roof to be safe and secure. Now there is another method to or, or usually while working on sloping roof there is a concept called roof ladder which we can use. A roof ladder is a, an inclined ladder which is hinged on to the roof ridge and the person can take support of the ladder which is sturdier than the roof itself in order to do any maintenance work, change of tiles, roof tiles or fixing solar photovoltaic cells etc. This can be done along with the uh, using this roof ladder. Now these roof ladders are not just restricted to sloping roofs, they can be used in fragile roofs also which we'll, we will come to in the next few slides. Now the next thing we are going to look is how to access fragile roofs safely. And to access fragile roof, first of all we'll see what fragile roofs are all about. It's not just the skylights that we talked about, where we already talked about fragile roofs, um, skylights being a form of fragile roof where uh, daylight is allowed into the building through glass uh, polycarbonate plastic roof sheets. It's very popular these days, especially in countries where sunlight availability is very low. And then there are roofs which are made of galvanized iron sheets. And this could be for um, in a rural setting, maybe for a shed, an animal shed, etc. We use galvanized iron sheet. Now there is something called unreinforced cement sheets, which means that it's not reinforced. We don't have an iron um, a material like a Concre like in a concrete structure, we know it is reinforced with steel. But these cement sheets could be without any sort of reinforcement or any sort of steel structure to make it stronger. An asbestos sheet is an example of an unreinforced cement sheet. Now the fourth kind of category of fragile roof is the unreinforced in insulation slabs. You may be wondering what an insulation slab is. This is usually used in countries where there is um, extreme cold climates and we need to give extra insulation onto the roof in order to prevent the heat gain in the building. And so these roofs, though they look like roofs and they could be a, a layer below the original roof, the structural roof itself, but these are not sturdy and cannot be accessed or cannot be stood upon in order to do any work that can cause ca casualties and accidents. 
So that's a figure on the on the screen. You can see the figure of a skylight. What I was talking to you about. There is a glass structure which allows uh, daylight into the building. Whenever you work on these roofs like this, there is a risk of the roof falling off. And so we need to have additional protection mechanism while working on fragile roof. Now, how do we do that? On the screen, you can see two mechanisms. One is the roof walk and the other is a mobile valley frame. The roof walk is like a ladder where we do not take the load. The load is evenly distributed by the structure itself, by the equipment itself. So people can stand on it and move about along the roof without actually standing on the roof and this is far more safer than standing on the fragile roof as you can see below it's an asbestos sheet roof now the second figure on the right figure five is a mobile valley frame where more than one support mechanism is taken the ridge of the adjacent roof has been used to move the mechanism the person gets support from the mobile valley frame and moves about now, as we have finished looking at the work on uh, sloping roof and fragile roofs and generally how to work on work in a more safer manner, manner on roofs, we'll now look at the next aspect of uh, moving things on construction sites, moving material and people on construction sites. And this is the transporting and ho hoisting of materials on site. And there are many ways to do it. The methods of transportation on construction site, first of all, we use cranes. Cranes are very uh, temporary structures on site where we, which we use to transport material and mostly heavy materials from one place to another. The next is using hoists. Hoists are used in for vertical transportation mostly. It can be used for both passengers as well as for people, as, as well as for material. So the third thing is use third mechanism is using gin or pulley wheels. Gins and pulley wheels are familiar in in a smaller setting, like in a in a rural. If you have been to some of the olden, visited older parts of India in villages, you've seen how pulleys are used to draw water from the well. So these can be used in construction sites also. These pulleys and hoist wheels or gin wheels as they are called, in order to lift things, lift materials from one part to the another, part to the other, maybe from ground level to a higher level, etc. The next way is very common, the way of handling, transporting objects and materials from one part of the site to another is by manual handling. And you would be surprised to know manual handling can be very risky if not done properly, in fact. Of all the accidents that happen on construction sites after fall from heights, the accidents or the injuries caused by manual handling is a, is a maximum contributor to accidents, loss of work days, even deaths on construction sites. So there is a proper scientific way of handling manual handling of objects on site, which we will look into. But before that, first we will look into how cranes are used on sites and how to use them in a very safe manner. What are the safety precautions that we need to take while using cranes on site? Cranes are temporary structures used in construction sites to lift heavy loads or move heavy loads from one place to another. If you have been to any construction site, you have seen these tall structures which look like um, wire, which look like space frames. And these are actually operated by uh, an operator and it is used to transport materials from one part of the uh, one part to another. There would be heavy materials on construction sites. There would be reinforcements, uh, steel and uh, iron re steel reinforcements on construction site. There would be big objects or equipments like uh, DG set or uh, chillers which have to be which cannot be manually it can be manually transported, but it would take a lot of time and effort and it can be easily done with using a crane. So in these days, cranes are ubiquitous site in all construction sites. And these have to be used in a very careful manner and we'll see how it is done. First of all, we need to prevent overloading. Now, whenever cranes are brought to a site, there is a rating given to it. The cranes have a maximum load limit written on it by the manufacturer. Also, there would be different parts of the crane, like the, the arm of the crane. There are certain wheels and pulleys attached to the crane. These all have got gradation, graded. They're all graded in terms of how much load that they can carry. 
and why to be say on us on the safe side we need to also always ensure that the cranes are not loaded beyond the limit so the first principle mechanism while using cranes on a site is that we need to prevent overloading the second one is that there are alarms and hoots me, hoot mechanism on within inbuilt into the crane itself and we need to make sure that uh, these are working properly and that uh, the, these mechanisms are always followed these are for the safety of the operators and the and the people around so sometimes we have seen there are uh, there are led light light uh, alarms given in order to show the ambit of the the crane uh, the the boom of the crane that we say and people have to be cleared from this area while the crane is in operation so one of the safety considerations while using a crane is to make sure that the alarms and hood mechanisms are working properly the third mechanism is to inspect the ground on which the crane stands the soil on which the crane stands is a very important function it has got a very important function on the stability of the crane it has to be on a firm ground and sometimes the the ground can be very so made of very soft soil and can cause instability and it's also important when a, whenever a crane is used to maybe transport or dig or do an excavation of soil from one part to the uh, part to the other sometimes the operator can misjudge the the stability of the soil and then it, the movement can be affected for example the the operator might misjudge that the pile of soil that has to be collected is softer and may use and may use only lesser strength or lesser time duration in order to tra transport that pile of soil from one place to another and what happens is when they unexpectedly hit a firm ground or a stronger or a more denser soil what happens is it can cause the toppling of the crane itself because the crane can pivot over it and topple over and so it has to be made sure the considerations have to be there to make sure that the ground on which the crane sits is firm and also the lug the load that the crane takes if it is a pile of soil even the density and the nature of it has to be studied before attempting to move it from one place to another so one of the important aspects before working a crane is to inspect the ground on which it sits and also the ground on which or the the kind of object that it is going to transport the next one is the inspection and maintenance there are regular inspection and maintenance as stipulated by law and there are stipulations by the the manufacturers of crane itself now it's not just important enough to follow these instructions we also have to periodically check and make sure that the maintenance is well done for the cranes now one of the first important aspect that we need to look in terms of uh, maintenance and inspection is to check where the friction takes place wherever there is maximum friction it could be the brakes it could be the hoist it could be the the ropes which are used in in by the crane these are areas which are susceptible to break and tear wear and tear very easily so wherever there is large friction we have to make sure that this is maintained often and periodic checks are done one of the thumb rules that we need to follow while operating a crane is that before be beginning any any work on a construction site an inspector a, a qualified inspector has to be brought onto the construction site and a thorough checking of the crane and the various parts have to be done before commencing the activity the next is the ropes and slings which have which we have to consider while um, main while using the maintenance of while ensuring maintenance of the crane or rather the safety of the crane on construction site ropes and slings are used to carry the objects and the heavy objects and um, uh, the heavy objects and materials on site and we need to make sure that these are well functioning there is no wear and tear and uh, that these are of the adequate length and quality so these are the five major aspects that we need to consider while using cranes or rather before using cranes on any construction site now the let's look good let's like look into the detail of what we were discussing just now how do we prevent overloading of the of the cranes first of all we need to estimate the load correctly like we said we need to know what we are lifting and how we are going to transport it then mark the crane and accessories at regular intervals with a loading capacity at each 
duration at at each radius for example there is uh, there are cranes called derricking cranes for them they have a radial activity also the arm has a radial movement so the maximum capacity has to be marked on the arm itself so the alarms and hoots are the second considerations that we talked about it alerts the operator and assistants when safety load is exceeded and then we also talked about keeping the ground firm careful a uh, careful of the soft soil and checking the periphery conditions one important uh, me- methodology that we can practice is to practice racing slowly checking for any instability or overloading inspection and maintenance follow governmental maintenance and inspection mandates get an inspection crane before co- get get an inspection of the crane done before commencing work on a site and then any part that undergoes friction the sheaves of the crane wire ropes hinges bolts and brakes these have to be given special consideration and special care and the safety mechanisms like safety lights sirens limit switches are functional or not this has to be checked this is an example of a sheaf of the sheaves and rope of a crane this is very crucial before doing before using the crane for any lifting activity on the site this is an this is one part that has to be thoroughly checked before using the crane for any activity on the site the crane safety lights as you can see on the figure these are square figures where which indicates what is the boom of the crane or which is the area that has been cleared preventing people and uh, objects to be within this this particular region that is demarcated by the crane safety lights ensure the safety the ropes and slings of the crane have safety limit marked on them have a cushion object a cushion between the object and the sling especially while carrying heavy objects using the or uh, using the crane we need to make sure that there is a cushion so that there is no friction and subsequent wear and tear or collapse of the crane now some of the best practices for safe crane lifts are shown in the figure uh, we need to provide barricades all around and ensure that the sling of the crane is at 45 to 60 degrees and give clear signals between the operator someone has to be standing outside and um, guiding the operator as to what is the movement that has to be undertaken and next we'll go into the construction hoist these are used to transport materials vertically on a construction site it has got a tower a carriage or car and a motor so we have a figure of the construction hoist there is a a vertical hoist that is vertical tower and there is a carriage or a car that moves up and down vertically and this is used for both transporting of material and also people at every level or the floor where the the hoist is set or the construction hoist is kept there is a stoppage where people and material can be off offloaded onto each level and then uh, other object other objects and things can be stacked on back to the hoist construction hoist and then taken up and down so that's a figure of a uh, construction hoist and what are the mechanisms and the safety measures that we need to take into consideration for hoist towers first of all hoist towers to are to be secured to buildings and uh, wherever there is uh, there there has to be secured at intervals onto the building in order to get stability the carriage which is where the people and the objects are kept for moving up and down there has to be a 2 meters enclosure around the carriage there has to be a fall arrester in order to prevent the carriage from falling down or in case the control is lost and the carriage falls off there has to be a fall arrester which attaches the carriage to the building and then the operation is in a way where the operator is at ground level and has got a view of the entire hoist when it goes up and down make sure that you're not carrying any materials like no like brick or sand etc if you're carrying a wheelbarrow make sure that it is blocked in a way that it doesn't roll off the platform the other safety measures is that whoever the personnel and the workers who are handling the vertical the construction hoist are pro- properly trained make sure that they have their personal safety mechanisms in case there is a fall or an accident make sure that they have a personal safety mechanism to prevent that fall etc so these are some of the preventive and safety measures for while using construction hoist on a construction site now we'll move on to pulley wheels pulley wheels are used for 
transporting smaller objects onto site and uh, it's for hoisting objects to raising objects from the ground level to a higher level it's used for lighter loads mostly they are also called as gin wheels and what some of the safety mechanisms that we use for pulley wheels is to ha- always have a two point support for pole hooks with safety latches have a hoisting rope rope which is maintained very well and checked at every interval use a lid for the bucket if it if contains liquid and do not overload so in today's lecture we have seen some of the mechanisms that we employ while working on a high level on a construction site first we looked at the use of uh, construction mechanism construction safety mechanisms while working on fragile roofs or uh, roofs in general we saw how to work in a safe manner while working on a flat roof or a sloping roof or even a fragile roof in the second part we looked at the mechanisms that are used in construction sites to hoist and transport mostly vertically objects and and people on construction site we looked at how cranes had to be maintained and how what are the safety mechanisms and safety measures that we have to take while using say while using cranes on a construction site we also saw how we use vertical hoist or construction hoist which are used for transporting people and materials on vertical level in a construction site and we saw what are the safety mechanisms that we need to practice while using these hoists the last part we saw about how to use pulley wheels on a construction site where um, what are the mechanisms that we need to keep in place in order to make sure that these are done in a safe manner and um, make sh- making sure what are the periodic mechanisms for maintenance and uh, effective working of these pulley wheels on construction site with this we come to the end of the uh, first part of this lecture where we have discussed we've had an overlook of having safety mechanisms for working on heights and in the subsequent lectures we'll be looking at uh, safety personal mechanisms about how to lift in a proper manner how to um, how to avoid injuries and personal accidents on the construction site uh please go through the units that have been provided there are detailed descriptions of uh, more than what i have discussed with you right now i've just given the points that are related to the unit and the more clarification can be obtained from going through the unit so uh, thank you for listening to me and have a good day